Are you the proud new owner of a puppy? If you are, congratulations. I couldn't be more excited for you. But you might be wondering, how are you going to socialize your puppy right now during this time of social distancing? If that is the question that you've been asking in the situation that you find yourself in, stick around. This video is going to be for you. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Stephanie, AKA Big Dog Mom. And on this channel, I share information and resources to help you and your big dog live your best life together. So if you're interested in the topic of puppy socialization <coughs> during social distancing, <laughs> stick around and consider hitting the subscribe button if you like this video before you go. So in this video, we are going to cover 15 tips, things that you can do to socialize your puppy while you're social distancing and staying home. The first five tips are gonna be things that you can do inside your home. The next five tips are gonna be things that you can do in your yard. And then the final five tips are gonna be things that you can do just slightly off of your property. And then stick with me to the very end because we are gonna share one special bonus um, that I think is going to be particularly helpful for you if you have a young puppy. All right, let's get going, puppy parents. With a foundational understanding of puppy socialization to mean any exposure or experience your puppy has early in life, and the two important caveats of never overwhelming or forcing your puppy, the first tip that I have for you is household sounds. So consider how many home appliances and tools you use on a daily basis that your puppy could potentially be fearful of if they're not exposed to them early in life. So some examples might be a hair dryer, as you see here, or a vacuum cleaner, a blender, pots and pans, or maybe even a popcorn maker. With that as your foundation, set up situations where your puppy is within earshot or close to you while you operate these tools. Have treats nearby, as you can see. I'm providing Sully and Junior treats to provide a positive association with the sound. This tip may not sound like socialization on the face of it, but trust me, playing games with your puppy are as valuable to his or her development as meeting a friendly stranger. Not only do they channel your puppy's energy in a productive way, but they are fun, which means you are fun, which results in your puppy wanting to be with you and listen to you. Some fun examples of games that you can play with your puppy are hide and seek, scent training games like the one you see here, teaching your puppy how to catch a ball in the air. I mean, truly, the options are limitless and really only limited by your own creativity and imagination. In this game, you can see I'm using a cupcake tray with some tennis balls and a few hidden pieces of jerky and just allowing the dogs the ability to use their nose and grab those tennis balls off there to get the jerky treats. Super simple game and one that your puppy will absolutely love, guaranteed. Okay, so for this tip, in terms of training your puppy and socializing your puppy while you're at home, is we're gonna show you how to use a clicker. So you might be familiar with a clicker. A clicker is very commonly used in dog training, um, dog obedience classes and that sort of thing. Lots of trainers use a clicker. And basically what the clicker is, is it's a marker that basically tells the dog once the clicker has meaning, and that's what we're gonna do today, but it tells the dog that they've done the right thing. So whatever behavior you've asked of your dog, say you've asked your dog to sit, and the dog sits, you click and mark that behavior that says, yes, dog, that was exactly right, and then that is followed with a treat. And so what we're gonna do today, right now, is just basically give this clicker meaning to the dog, because otherwise it's just a click. The dog doesn't know what that means, so it's just a random sound. What we're gonna do is give that sound meaning and we do that by pairing it with treats. It's no different than you know the, the Pavlov, it's classical conditioning at its best is pairing this um, clicker with a treat. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Sully already knows what the clicker means, but I'm gonna show you essentially how to prime the clicker. And all we do is go like this. And I have a little tiny treats in my hand. And all I'm gonna do is click, get it out of your jowls. And so your puppy won't be near this dirty. And I, the timing is, is important, but essentially you just want that treat to follow the click. Okay. And so that is all you do with priming the clicker. It's pretty basic. I'm not asking Sully to do anything. There's no behavior that I'm requiring of him. He hears the click, he gets a treat. 
And so that's what you're gonna wanna do first. If you've never used a clicker with your puppy, which I would presume many of you haven't, that's what you wanna do. So now I'm gonna show you basically how to then go to the next step, which is start to use, use it to ask for behaviors that you want. If you're very early, if you have a puppy right now and you're just starting puppy training, you're gonna to want to you know, ask for sits and downs and come and leave it and other behaviors and the sky's really the limit, but you can use the clicker now that the dog, the, the clicker is primed for your puppy you can ask for all sorts of behaviors. So we're gonna do just a super simple one, very quick, and we're just gonna sort of teach Sully to sit. So now we are going to just teach a very simple behavior, probably the most simple behavior that there is in all of dog training, and that is just how to teach a dog to sit using the clicker. So this is a super basic exercise, but you can see Sully is already sitting. So we wanna get him in a standing position. Come here, Sully. Good. Here, let's get you to stand here. Let's scoot back. <laughs> Here, hold on, we just gotta get him to sit. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is, now technically you wouldn't necessarily be using a word first, but um, we're not gonna belabor that at this point. I'm just gonna show you the timing of the clicker with the dog sitting. Okay, Sally, sit. <laughs> just like that, okay? Now Sally, stay, come here, come here. <laughs> come here. Okay, Sally, sit, good. So it's a little bit funky because obviously he's not, he's already naturally wanting to sit. Okay, Sully, sit. Good. So you can also pair this with a hand motion, which is what Sully knows. Okay, here, come here, here, let's go. Let's go this way, stand up. Okay, ready? Sully, sit. sit. So he kind of knows this to be sit. But basically that gives you an idea of the timing. And so it's super simple. Just ask for the sit as soon as his bottom hits the floor, you click and treat. And we'll just prime that clicker a couple times. That's a good boy. Okay, so the next tip I'm gonna show you is just a few little, um, a couple of little things that I think are really helpful when you have a puppy. Just some simple basic obedience that if you're home, you might as well start working on. And so the first one is the command leave it. So I'm gonna show you how that looks, kind of how I start the process of teaching leave it um, with a puppy. And it's super simple, you don't need a clicker or anything, but basically all I do is I have just some little treats in my hand and I'm gonna put my hand out like this. And as soon as, let me just tell you what I'm gonna do before I do it. So as soon as Sully moves back away from my hand and gives me sort of space and respect, then I open my hand and let him take it. Okay, so that's kind of how that starts. Eventually what I'm gonna do is ask for and, and he'll learn, he, he will start to get it where he, he'll have to sort of get permission before I say, okay, take the treat. And so we fast forward then now if something falls off the kitchen counter, he gets permission before he can take whatever it is and if he's even allowed to have it. So but often if something falls off the counter, we wouldn't let them have that anyway, I would hand it to him. But we're just gonna start here with just the simple treat. <laughs> okay, so now he's not going after it. So. So see, he, he knew that first time that he wasn't successful getting the treat. <laughs> so now he's not even trying. But basically now I'm gonna give him the treat. Okay, so now we're gonna do it again. So see how he's kind of going after it. Okay, do it again. Okay. So that's all there is to it. So you might have a puppy, and, and most people will have a puppy that may even paw at your hand, may bite at your hand. It really is a, a, a test of even your own patience. Just wait him out, be really calm, and, and as soon as the dog kind of moves away from your hand, then you say okay. And that's all there is to leave it. It really is pretty basic, but um, as I said, if you, if you want more on kind of how I teach Leave It, let me know in the comments below because this is a very brief look. Um, I wanted to get you started with that process of kind of teaching your puppy a little bit of self-control. So now we're gonna talk about front door manners because this is an essential skill, especially if you have a large or giant breed puppy, that you must get a handle over your front door. Okay, so for this exercise, what I'm gonna show you is just a really brief overview of kind of starting to teach front door manners. And so this is so that as your puppy 
grows, and if you have certainly a larger giant breed dog, you wanna have some, well, any dog, you need to have control over your front door. So when people knock on the door, if they hear the doorbell, um, the dogs aren't just sent into this massive frenzy that's uncontrollable. So the way I start teaching front door manners is super quick. They first need to learn where their place is. Where do you want them to go when they hear the door? So that's kind of the first step. The other part of that is that they need to understand how to stay. So you'll wanna work on both of those things. You can do it while you're teaching front door manners or you can teach those two exercises, those two behaviors first. But what you wanna do is decide in your mind and ours is this front room, super easy. It's, it's you know, sunken so the dogs can see that there's a very clear barrier. There's a clear place for them to go when the doorbell or somebody's knocking on the door. So that's basically what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna show you how to incorporate your kids. So I usually have my children pose as like the UPS man. And so some of the times we will have them come in the door and I'll talk to them and the dogs will not be allowed to greet them. But then other times, as you'll see, I'm gonna release the dogs and the person, the fake stranger, the friendly stranger on the outside of the door is gonna give some treats to the dog. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a friendly stranger, my son basically posing as a friendly stranger, knock on the door. <gasps> Who is that? Who is it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, go to your room. Come on. Go to your room. Son, go to your room. Go to your room. Sit. Good, Saul. Junie. Junior, good boy, stay. Oh. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hey. Oh, thank you so much for the package. Oh, yeah. okay, so, here, go back. Okay. Okay, so that was kind of how I would do it with just talking to him. And now, so see, I didn't release the dogs. They were not allowed to say hello to that person. Okay, and so this time, we are going to have our, our friendly stranger, our friend, Hi. come in the house. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you too, how uh, are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Do you wanna say hi to the dogs? Yeah. Sit. Uh-uh, Jun. What do they mean? Junior. So that one's Junior. This is Junior and that's Sally, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, come. So now what the, we're gonna do is the friendly stranger is going They're to provide so some- some treats to the dogs. Yes, there yes. There we yes, go. Yes. Good job, and the guys. the last one we split. Okay, split it. Very good. And so that's kind of how I teach front door manners. And so it, it really helps us so that the dogs, because they're huge, they don't bombard the door. They ha I have some semblance of control. They're not perfect, but it's a heck of a, a lot better than, uh, you know, having 450 pounds of dog running at you at the front door. And now we get to one of my most favorite activities, cutting dog nails. Nail trimming is a critical part of socializing your puppy. This includes all aspects of trimming nails, but most importantly, the conditioning that's required to teach your puppy that nail trims can be and should be awesome. In this video, I am showing you a very brief look at a nail session with Junior and Sully. It is not meant to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you are interested in more information about my method, the Dog Nail Pro method, or my course, Dog Nail Pro, which is a step-by-step -step online training course on force-free nail trimming, uh, there, I'll be, put a link in the description below where you can get more information and put your name on the wait list if you're interested. For now, I encourage you to watch this video and comment with any questions or challenges you're facing with trimming your puppy's nails. Weather permitting where you live, the next five puppy socialization activities that you can do at your home will expose them to new sights, sounds, and smells while playing and having fun outside. So this tip, tip number six, I like to call American Ninja Puppy. Set up an obstacle course in your yard and practice some agility-like fun with your puppy. Pretend you and your puppy are an American Ninja. Enlist your kids to help. As you can see, we set up an obstacle course using kitchen chairs, some old scrap wood from our garage, uh, a bucket from Home Depot, some little cones, and their Coranda dog bed. Think of ways to stimulate your puppy's five senses, sight, smell, touch, hearing, taste. Be creative and have fun. I'll link a card up above 
for the video and blog post that I did on using classical conditioning to teach a reliable recall using a whistle and some dog treats. In this video though, I'm showing how you can use your children and just a few treats to have some fun in your backyard to teach your puppy a reliable recall. The goal here is just use your enthusiasm or your kid's enthusiasm and teach your puppy that coming to each member of your family is met with love and treats. And the more you do that, the more your puppy will be reliable at coming when you call him. Taking this one step further, you can see that my children in this video are not only calling the dogs, but they're doing a little bit of obedience training as well, which is super fun for all involved. Mom, Mom did you get my obedience? Yes, so puppy. Remember what I said earlier, puppy socialization involves exploration, experience. It's not necessarily about meeting new people. So water can represent a great opportunity for your puppy to learn and to explore the world around him. So if you have a swimming pool, you could consider getting a life jacket and actually do some swimming with your puppy. Or you could use a small plastic pool, like one that you would get outside of a grocery store or Walmart or one of those places. Um, but in this activity, I'm just showing you a super simple way to have some water fun with your puppy. So just grab a couple of buckets. You don't have to use huge buckets like this. I have big dogs. But for a puppy, you may want to have a smaller little bucket, fill it with water, and then cut up some pieces of apple or use tennis balls. And have your puppy dunk for the apples or the tennis balls. You may need to encourage him at first to take the plunge, but I promise you, it will be worth it for both of you. There you go. Games are not limited to indoor activities. Hide and Seek is a fantastic game that stimulates your puppy's sense of smell and hearing and just is a great deal of fun for your entire family. If you have children, hand, have them stand behind a bush or maybe the corner of your house and call your puppy to them. If your puppy has trouble and doesn't seem to understand, have your child step out from behind their hiding place and call your puppy. Have your children or whoever is hiding have some treats prepared for when your puppy arrives. Encourage your puppy by asking, where so-and-so? Let's go find him. Again, this is a super fun game to play inside or out. With enthusiasm, excitement, and lots of treats, your puppy is sure to come to love this game as much as my boys do. Whether the yard work occurs in your own yard or in someone else's close to you, exposing your puppy to the sights and sounds of yard work in action is important for future fear-free walks where landscapers are in action. Some examples include a lawn mower, snow blower, leaf blower, as you can see here, or hedge trimmer. The point here is not to have your puppy interact with these tools. The goal is simply to expose your puppy to these sights and sounds with a few treats to let them know there is absolutely nothing to fear when they're around. The last five tips involve walks in your neighborhood. So you may be asking, but wait, my puppy is not fully vaccinated. How can we go for walks in our neighborhood? There are some do's and don'ts as it relates to walking your puppy. So I encourage you to check out the blog post link below this video where I cover all of those do's and don'ts and some important information about why it really is important for you to walk your puppy right now um, for the, the purposes of puppy socialization. Because dogs don't distinguish objects that are more than 20 feet away, and therefore our dogs are unable to distinguish family from a friendly stranger at a distance beyond 20 feet, this sets up a perfect opportunity for you and your puppy to practice behavior with an approaching friendly stranger. Simply have someone walk towards your puppy from a distance, um, or you can get lucky like we were and have a friendly stranger just happen to walk by while we're filming. Balls are fun for kids and for puppies, but they can represent a huge distraction when we are out on a walk with our dog. Remember, socialization is about experience, not necessarily obedience. The idea of this activity is that the more your puppy sees balls being played with and is pleasantly reinforced for staying calm, the less likely he will be to dart after them. 
is not uncommon for dogs to chase people on bikes or scooters. However, I believe the behavior is entirely preventable if practiced during this critical socialization period. You may want to start with having your puppy sniff a bike that is not moving first. Work from a low intensity to a higher intensity activity so as to not overwhelm your puppy. Let your puppy sniff the bike and get a few treats and then move up to the bikes moving. Provide plenty of treats and affection for calm behavior in the presence of a moving bike. Very often rescue organizations will use this activity in order to temperament test their dogs for particular sensitivities. The reason is that some dogs, or in our case here, puppies, are wary of certain types of people. For example, people wearing a hat or sunglasses. To socialize your puppy with all types of strangers, have one of your kids or someone you know, someone in your house, or even a neighbor could do this. Dress up and approach at a distance. Remember what I said about the 20 feet rule. Remember your puppy cannot distinguish that man with the hat and glasses is your son until he's about 20 feet, if not much closer. Have the stranger provide your puppy a treat and some affection. Be creative and have fun. And for the last tip on how to socialize your puppy at home while you're social distancing, we are going to go for a walk at night. A dog's retina is uniquely able to receive more stimulation in low light settings as compared to humans. So walks at night are a terrific opportunity for your puppy to see the world around him in a new and brilliant way. Remember, this activity is not about perfect obedience on a long walk around the neighborhood. Even a short trip around a cul-de-sac is plenty for a puppy. Your puppy's senses will be on high alert at night, so you will not need to go far to take advantage of the wonderful world around you. While we are currently being asked to stay home, I choose to interpret that loosely, especially when it comes to my dogs. There's no reason to confine them to a life of home isolation, and so here is my bonus tip for you on how to socialize your puppy. Get in the car and go bye-bye. The entire experience of going bye-bye for your dog presents a plethora of learning opportunities from countless new sights, smells, and sounds. Your puppy can learn all about the world around them from the comfort and safety of inside your car. So grab some treats, strap your puppy in for safety, and enjoy the ride. Remember to check the blog post linked below this video and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we will see you in our next video. Bye for now. New to my channel, I am, uh, I just hit my microphone. Are you the proud new owner of a, God, Sully. One of the things that many new puppy owners, oh boy, Sully. Gah! Okay. God. Okay. In this era of social distance. Okay, do it again. It's not an era. It's not an era. We're there. We're gonna do. This is like Switzerland. We're right in the middle. Stay. Okay. Is it filming? While you are. Is that bad? Your whole body is in the way.